my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Story Genius by Lisa Cron. This is one that has been pushed on me by a good friend <laughs> for a very long time. She tries to push it on everyone for how to evaluate their novel. And the whole point of this book is asking yourself why. I wasn't really sure about this book having read Wired for Story first because it was so heavy in science. I really didn't want to read that type of book again, <laughs> but this one's a lot better. In both she does, it's very like voicey, you kind of get to know who Lisa is, but this one was way more so and I really enjoyed that. Throughout this book, there's a lot of examples for how to write, how she's telling you to write, and there's a, an author's example along the way so that you can kind of compare and see what they do to see what you should do as well. There are 15 chapters, including an introduction, and all of these will be in the Word document that I'm putting up on my members page. So be sure to sign up for the newsletter, and I have a link down below, and then you'll have access to all the things. <laughs> so I'm just going to do like the intro of this and then kind of explain a little bit along the way. So. Basically, Story Genius is saying that your story is the protag story. It's not about your plot. It's not about like what your story entails. It is your protag. They're making sense of what is happening. So how they struggle with, evaluate, and weigh what matters most to them, and then makes hard decisions to move the action forward. The struggle is based on the protagonist's impossible goal to achieve their desire and remain true to the fear that's keeping them from it, remaining true to their misbelief. Story is about how things that happen in the plot affect the protagonist and how they change internally as a result. So you're going to want to get rid of anything in your story that does not impact the protagonist's internal struggle. She was saying in one of the chapters, like people sometimes go on tangents after an idea, but it doesn't really relate back to anything that matters to the protagonist. They're not internally digesting that and reevaluating how they feel about something. It's just happening or they're having fun or like whatever. <laughs> this book tackles the myth <laughs> of great writing advice, um, of pantsing, of crappy first drafts, of plotting, and then external story structures. So save the cat, three act structure, all of that. They basically are like stories follow this predictable pattern where this happens by page 20, this by page 50, this by page 200, whatever. And they're saying to like just get rid of that and write your story and write how your protagonist changes over the course of the story. Bam. It takes a lot of the pressure off. <laughs> okay, and then some of the like tips I took away from this was like you can't write about how someone changes unless you know specifically what caused it. The story you're telling didn't start on page one, it started long before you even got there. In medias rest does not mean in the middle of the action, it means in the middle of the story. So don't start at the beginning, start at the middle. The middle is the second half of your story and where the plot really kicks in. You can't leave the why out of the picture or the action falls flat. So you have to have flashbacks for the first half of the story and basically like weave them in throughout. So this book is going to have you go through exercises of like what gave you that story idea to begin with, why do you care about it, and what is your point of the story. I decided that while I was reading this I was going to experiment and I went ahead and wrote down my answers to those questions and like you also write down like what your what if scenario is. So then you're thinking of who your protagonist is and it takes you through how to pick your protagonist and then you're going to write a couple paragraphs of who they are and where they are before the story begins. Chapter 5 goes into why. Like why will the unavoidable conflict matter to your protagonist? Like what's happening and why do they care? What do they want and why do they want it? What is their misbelief? That one's a big one. <laughs> it's crazy. So they don't like the term fatal flaw or wound or I'm guessing shard of glass. They want to know what their misbelief was and it was interesting how they like thought about it. <laughs> and I wrote all of that down. I typically think of story. I'm going to put this in a coffee chat. Be sure to watch it because I don't want to bog down my thoughts on this book. It is character versus plot. What you come up with first, what you develop first, what do you care about? That kind of thing. So be sure to check out that coffee chat. Typically, I don't do this much backstory on my main character for a little bit. <laughs> I get a like plot and character in the same moment, usually the inciting incident, and kind of go from there. 
And so this has been an interesting technique in trying to figure out my character before I even begin the story. And I had to really harness myself because I like just taking an idea. I'm part pantser. I just like going and writing and figuring it out. I'm definitely a discovery writer and I just like writing. I don't like plotting for a hundred pages like ah. um and so this was really hard for me because she was like do not go do do not go write this and I'm like what <laughs> so yeah I had a little bit of a struggle so then we're gonna look at their world view you're gonna say like what do they go into the scene believing why do they believe it what's their goal in the scene and what do they expect will happen and that's something that you always want to think about and I never think about the things I just like do them and I think my scenes always answer those questions anyway but I definitely never go and evaluate my scenes I should probably do that is it lazy is it like my brain knows what's up like I don't know <laughs> so then we're gonna dig into the cause and effect and this is where kind of like they want to start doing like your scenes and why you're putting in certain scenes there should be an internal and external cause and effect they also want you to like write down character bios and not so much bios like what their favorite song and movie is or favorite flower or whatever I mean if it's important they're so their character bios are relevant to the story they want anything you write down about a character to be what is going to be in the story, why it matters to the protagonist, and that kind of thing. You don't need to go off on a tangent about all the things that you're never going to put in your novel. I think I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes versus my experiment. <laughs> but so they want to help you figure out when to start your novel. So then you're going to think about all the things that are initial problems, where you can drop them in media rest, all of that stuff. And there's a couple of tests to test that by. And what I thought was interesting, so these books are so character driven that they say when you describe your book to someone, you share the story, the protagonist story, not the plot with subplots. So next time you're scrambling like, oh my gosh, what is my story about? How can I make this concise? Tell them about your protagonist her misbelief, their misbelief to their like discovery maybe and be like my girl's going on this journey to find out this and that's what the reader's gonna get with anyway you know and then you can add like and it's on another planet with aliens like whatever but the they're saying like your story is about your protagonist's story so that's what you would say. So this is something I'd like to make a template of in case anyone wanted it but to open your novel, they're going to start having you think about scenes to open your novel. And so, let's see if this focuses. This is their cause and effect, like scene card. They have a lot of different things. They want you to fill out like scene cards, ideas. Um, they want you to make folders for a thousand things. <laughs> but this goes into like the alpha point, which is like the over external plot that's going on, your subplots, and then like the plot cause what happens affect the consequence and then the third rail which is their internal struggle journey why it matters to them the realization and the and so like what kicks them on to the next scene and so this is how this is like a lot of thought y'all a lot of thought that I don't feel like doing and I didn't do it <laughs> my experiment failed because I didn't fill these out but um, I think it's interesting like if that's something that would be helpful for you guys so chapter 10 is about the aha moment when they figure out and overcome their misbelief so the this book is having you write the opening the aha moment and then the ending basically so then we go into a chapter about building your blueprint which is basically all your scene cards so that you have like a trajectory and this goes against the guidelines that says there's not a prescribed number of scenes beats turns or plot twists that you find its own organic architecture. And I was like, hmm, okay, that means that I'm okay to go against Save the Cats, the number of scenes. <laughs> Saying you need to build your story by creating a plot that will constantly force your increasingly reluctant protagonist to change. And along the way, they keep reminding you to constantly ask yourself, why? So then they do a chapter that goes into backstory and filling out a bunch of back stuff so that you can fill in the the current present time stuff and they basically want you to keep writing down how you think your story is going to go how you think scenes are going to go and then like keep probing it for specifics and keep asking why it goes through subplots storylines and secondary characters and how to weave them all in if your 
clunky about that this might be helpful for you and then the final chapter basically talks about how you're gonna write all your cards and make them interwoven with each other for each scene each subplot each character each whatever and that if you make a change in the beginning it's gonna affect the whole way through so and that it's okay that if you make that change just track it the rest of the way everything is going to affect everything some takeaway tips at the end of this is your protagonist must draw a strategic conclusion from everything they notice so it has to everything has to be affecting what they're doing or how they interpret what's happening in relation to their story you must get emotion onto every page don't tell the reader they feel sad, happy, etc. Tell them why. Get that internalization going on. Emotion comes from how your character makes sense of what's happening. Put the reader in your protagonist's skin as they struggle so it evokes the same emotion in your reader. And then you must stay in your protagonist's subjective mindset. Story isn't just what happens, but what it costs your protagonist internally to make the decisions that drive the external action. Make sure how your protagonist sees the world is on every page. If they happen to do something out of character, it's okay, but there needs to be a credible why beforehand. Why it would have made sense that they were out of character. But mostly, you want to keep your protagonist's mindset and worldview and carry that through each scene, how they're going to look at something, how they're going to look at other people's actions and words and all of that and build the story internally from that. <laughs> so they have some final thoughts too. If a random idea sweeps you away and you forget everything in this book, remember to ask why of everything until you get down to the specific and ask and so of everything to make sure the reader needs to know it and that it drives the story forward, that you know what happens as a result of it and that you know what the point of it is. And it gives some inspiration and says, change the worldview of your reader. The only way to change how someone thinks about something is to first change how they feel about it. So this book, Story Genius, and Wired for Story are all about character. They're all about the inner journey, struggle, misbelief, and overcoming of that misbelief. So go to my coffee chat so we can talk about characters <laughs> and all of that and how you think about story when you think about story. But I thought that these were very interesting and it does give a lot of things to think about when you're thinking about your story and your protagonist and all your subplots and secondary characters and just asking yourself why. I think that's going to help a lot and then also just nailing down specifics instead of having generalities which when I'm pantsing I come up with that. I come up with the seeds that I plant. I come up with all the stuff that they say I need to plot ahead of time and just like uh, it's not my style. Um, I tried it for this experiment. They also have you write down like three defining moments in the beginning that made your character the way they are. And that was a bit of a struggle for me. I do want to create, this is, I was doing this because I wanted to create some short stories real fast. So I have four characters that I wanted to do that with and I did this with my first character. So they have the three turning point scenes that deepen their misbelief. And then I charted my character's story beginning an ending. I think I missed the aha moment. Oops. <laughs> and then I went on to do like what my possible scenes were that I would make scene cards for, but I'm too lazy. But I got those down, so I pretty much have a path for this book. I just am gonna go into it knowing all this story genius stuff and ask it in the back of my brain rather than spending a ton of time writing it all out which totally defeats the point probably, but whatever. <laughs> Let me know if y'all have any questions about this book, anything that it covers. Um, I'm gonna have a link for it down below for Amazon. And then if y'all just wanna sign up for my newsletter and get the notes that I put, there's a ton more than I actually said. Um, but yeah, sign up for that. Be sure to check out the other videos and all of that. And I will see y'all next time.